everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm featuring uh, Open Baffle speaker system number 1695, which is a 15 inch open baffle two and a half way. And so in this video, I'm just gonna walk through uh, the design and discuss uh, why I came up with this and some of the advantages. And uh, I'm also gonna introduce a new video series uh, for enthusiasts and other businesses that uh, walks you through step by step on how to develop uh, a crossover uh, for a speaker like this and some and also some other projects and so it's kind of like a uh, how to do crossover design uh, step by step in in very great detail uh, so just uh, stick around for for more of that um, okay so this uh, like I mentioned it's a three and a half way or sorry two and a half way 15 inch open baffle uh, you can see it pictured here. This was actually a custom build for Don Sachs of uh, Don Sachs Audio. He has his own uh, company. Uh, he's now going into retirement, but uh, he was looking for his uh, so-called endgame speaker uh, going into retirement. And so Don uh, designs and builds uh, world-class tube amplifiers. And so uh, he was wanting something to work with his uh, push-pull uh, 300B tube amps, which I believe are around 30 watts per channel. And so the goal here was, a, was uh, something that has uh, very high sensitivity and that would work in his large space. So he has a uh, open concept uh, living arrangement with cathedral ceilings. And so the goal here was to provide something with the resolution, high sensitivity, uh, and, a, and a nice, full, rich sound signature uh, for use in a large space that he, that he like what he has. So you can see here, um, solid cherry baffle that's been CNC machined either side. It uses uh, steel support legs with the uh, ISO Acoustics Gaia feet. And then you can see here, I'm using the uh, rear cover on the compression driver. And so it has kind of that tapered uh, look to it. And here's some photos of uh, kind of the pre before we uh, applied the wax to the cherry wood there and just how it looks and you can see the steel uh, support legs um, the support legs are constructed from quarter inch thick mild steel that were sent out for uh, professional powder coating which is a nice durable uh, beautiful finish so um, here are some more images of the finished uh, setup and so it's using a 10 inch uh, scan speak uh, woofer 15 inch uh, woofer from SB audience and that's model 15 OB 350 and then we're using the 65 CDN uh, compression driver for this as well so as you can see we've uh, fully integrated the horn into the baffle for a very clean uh, elegant look the baffle is also uh, tilted back nine degrees and then uh, we also have like the beveling on the front baffle as well and so the idea with the wide baffle is to just provide a very clean step response uh, for the first few milliseconds uh, just gets that sound wave away from the baffle uh, and no kind of interruptions for at least a few milliseconds so um, so yeah I've just summarized already so maybe I haven't touched on the crossover points so uh, 180 Hertz using a steep filter and then we're using first order uh, on the mid and highs with the 1.2 kilohertz crossover point so um, yeah I'll get to that in a sec but uh, the crossover I went through a number of different design topologies and based on you know extensive listening um, this actually started out as a two-way using just the 15 inch woofer but after setting up a test baffle and and doing extensive listening I, I found that the woofer kind of fell short in that 300 hertz to kind of 600 hertz region and then it sounded uh, slightly colored and in fact I have not heard a 15 inch woofer not sound colored in that part of the frequency spectrum and so uh, when I uh, reconfigured the test baffle to include the 10 inch scan speak driver um, everything just fell into place in the, in, the, in the way that the 10 inch provided a much cleaner uh, lower mid-range and uh, this particular driver it's very low distortion um, thanks to the SD1 motor technology from ScanSpeak 
um, when ScanSpeak had sent me the 3D CAD file for this project, they had included all of the kind of features within the motor. And when I sectioned, did a section view in SolidWorks, I could see that they're using copper in three different locations in the motor. From the outside, the, the motor uh, looks just like a, any other motor, but uh, there's quite a lot of technology packed into that uh, for their symmetrical drive one motor technology, which is uh, designed to uh, provide very low distortion. So uh, that combined with the uh, interesting cone in that it has like this kind of, I don't know, paper mache look to it. Um, the uh, I, I'm speculating here, but I believe that's to really kind of damp out any breakup in the upper mid range and that seems to really work uh, the driver just sounds clean right into the upper upper mid range into the kind of the three or four kilohertz region uh, which allows me to do this first order um, and then on the flip side the compression driver is a, a large it's a medium format compression driver in that it has a two and a half inch diameter titanium uh, dome diaphragm and so to facilitate uh, the first order crossover, I had to use the uh, enlarged rear cover on the compression driver, which lowers the uh, mechanical resonance from, I believe it's 450 hertz, it lowers it all the way down to around 290 hertz. And so subjectively, that really cleans up the uh, sound character, kind of in the uh, 600 hertz to 1.2 kilohertz region, it's, it's certainly noticeable. Um, with the addition of that rear cover. So I've also, I'll post a link in the description, I do offer that uh, 3D CAD file for the rear cover for that specific uh, compression driver. Um, if you want to 3D print the rear cover yourself, if you're using these compression drivers, um, I highly suggest that you uh, make that change. It's uh, especially if you're crossing it lower than, for example, lower than two kilohertz, it kind of cleans up that below that region. Um, I should note too that the ceramic version, which is the 65CD-T, uh, um, it's interchangeable with the rear cover. So if you have the ceramic version, the uh, 3D CAD file that I have for that will work as well. So you can see here the overall dimensions, uh, just over 60 centimeters wide and just over a meter tall. Uh, the main section of the baffle is um, 55 millimeters thick, but the uh, horn extends out the back and I actually had to uh, machine a pocket or hole in the bed of my CNC so that when we flip that baffle onto its uh, back, the protrusion out the back actually went into my CNC bed uh, just so that we could machine the front face of this. So I was a little bit involved in uh, getting this baffle machined uh, there. So. I already touched on the 10 inch driver, um, mentioning the compression driver. Uh, the support legs are quarter inch, I believe I mentioned that, but that is part of the design uh, and being able to provide an extremely rigid uh, structure between the baffle and the support legs and so that the, um, the isolation feet can do their job. Uh, it's very similar to uh, you know, a performance car in the sense that you want chassis rigidity and then you can focus on providing you know the suspension is going to work a lot better uh, and keep that car glued to the road if your chassis is is uh, rigid and so same kind of idea there um, if your baffles flexing and moving around then the damp the, the isolation feet aren't going to be doing uh, nearly a good of a job so um, okay, yeah, just touching on the training video series. So I used Don's project um, as part of the training kind of on how to develop a crossover for a speaker project like this. And so um, it just covers off step-by-step uh, -step on collecting the raw frequency response data for the individual drivers, including the impedance response, um, how to set up your measurement as far as the hardware and the software and, and then troubleshooting um, if you're running into problems um, using the software step by step and then um, just the overall process of the subjective evaluation and actually how, what to uh, what to look for uh, and then how to make the necessary adjustments based on the subjective listening and then uh, how to 
um, make the changes uh, to the various aspects of the speaker. Um, so rigging up the test crossover and then strategies for passive crossover design and, and how to achieve the desired frequency response. Um, and then tips and tricks on how to get better sound. So with Don's project, we were using um, you know really good drivers. And so that's not always the case. Sometimes you're, for whatever reason, left with drivers that aren't uh, great or they have some issues that just need to be corrected. So I also go through that as well. I have a 10 inch uh, Pro Sound coaxial here that I also included in part uh, three of the series um, just to, you know, be kind of the thorn in your side on, on, you know, trying to get your project to sound good and how to implement notch filters and things like that. So, um, so it's a three part series. Each part is around an hour long. So it's about three hours total of video step-by-step uh, -step walkthrough on how to do crossover design and speaker development. So uh, check that out and I'll put a link in the description there. Okay, so I had asked Don, um, this time it kind of ties into the video training series. It's one thing to show somebody how to do something, but does the end result actually sound good? Um, so I asked Don to provide a short paragraph uh, for my website on his listening impressions and so he went a little a little bit beyond that and actually provided quite a novel of explaining um, you know the project and, and what he thought of the sound I'm not going to read uh, the entire thing um, but maybe just pick off uh, you know a section here for example he says uh, the sound is stunningly good and the tim timber and tonality are spot on Dynamic range is shocking, and bass and mid-range will hit you in the chest at high levels. External subwoofers need not apply. They sound fast and nimble, and they vanish like stand mount, like a stand mount mini monitor, but they have that rich, full, and lightning quick bass. Um, so that that is uh, what I was trying to achieve with this design in the sense that one of the major tests that I do is to play tr soundtracks that have like the grand piano and uh, you know, does it replicate the authenticity of the grand piano and it sounds rich and full and has like some substance to it? Um, that's the goal here. I think a lot of speakers fall short on that. And so with the 15 inch woofer combined with the 10 inch, um, the bass is clean and tight. And what I found was I had originally thought of just using the 10 inch as a mid range only. Um, however, I found that the ScanSpeak actually produced quite a bit of bass on its own. And in fact, when you had them summing together, um, by virtue of them having different, their own individual frequency response, but also being in two different physical locations, um, they sum together to a much flatter response um, compared to if you just had the single driver operating on its own. Um, and so it seems to really kind of just work well and um, I've tried a number of 10 inch drivers particularly from the pro sound side of things and they always sound a little bit uptight to me the scan speak has a very relaxed sound character very uh, warm presentation uh, compared to the pro sound drivers that I've used which are there's quite a few drivers that I've tested so um, it's just a really wonderful sounding driver. I would say it's the kind of the kingpin of the overall design and that it is providing a massive amount of the frequency bandwidth. Um, you know, I am using 1.2 kilohertz crossover, but by two and a half, three kilohertz, the driver is only down about six dB, right? And so it's still covering, you know, probably the, the a major part of the vocal range there. So, um, so yeah, by uh, having physical time alignment as far as the depth of the drivers uh, and then the first order, it's going to give you a really good step response, which is going to mean uh, very good coherency. And like Don said in his review, he couldn't tell anywhere, he could not perceive where the drivers were. It just was a cohesive uh, sound. And so that was the overall goal with that. So. I think I covered off everything here. Uh, speaker open baffle, 1695. Um, if you're looking for a custom build, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, this uh, project did uh, garner quite a bit of interest, and so I feel like if I was commissioned to build another pair, 
I would likely build a second or third pair just for inventory, which helps with the overall cost. Um, so I did decide to put a uh, product page together uh, there and you can check it out. And um, the cost has been adjusted to, re to reflect that I will build additional pair for inventory. So I will keep kind of everybody updated on, on my social uh, if there is going to be additional pair um, in inventory. Um, whether we make it out of cherry or oak, um, we have a, a chocolate oak stain that looks fantastic. Very similar to the walnut, um, but you could also uh, have the open baffles built out of walnut as well. So uh, I think I'm pretty sure I covered everything off, but certainly if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me there. Take care and have a great day.